Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh, your incredibly handsome science teacher. That's right. In this video, we are going to learn the first seven OLL algorithms. There are 57 OLL algorithms altogether, and you will need to know those if you want to be a true CFOP genius slash master, but you only need to know seven algorithms in order to do intermediate CFOP or what is called for look last layer. And I'm going to show you those first seven, the seven that you will need in order to uh, be able to do for look last layer in this video. Uh, before I do that, though, just a couple of quick notes. Okay, first of all, note or notice as we go through these that I am calling them by each one by a distinct name. And uh, these names, the reason I do that is because these names help you to remember, remember, Renee, uh, the what, what you're seeing, the pattern. Because you're looking for, when you are solving your cube, like this, I'm doing this with my hands, pretending that I am solving the cube. And I get to OLL, I will have a pattern. And I'll look at it, I'll be like, what is that pattern? It's one of 57 things. And, or in the case of four look last later, it'll be one of seven things. The way that I'm narrowing it down is by doing a yellow cross. Whereas with two look last later, I don't do the yellow cross. But after I do the yellow cross, then I'm gonna have one of seven possibilities. And uh, I, it helps me to re remember or recognize the pattern if I have a name. So some of these names are fairly, uh, you know, widely accepted, widely used in the Cuban community, like soon and anti soon or fish. Okay. And others are not so widely agreed on. And, and some of them are completely uh, not agreed on by anybody at all. Uh, these first seven though tend to have pretty widely recognized names, uh, especially the first two soon and anti soon. So there. Uh, second thing I want to briefly say is that you are allowed to use your own algorithms. There are more than one algorithm for each of these cases, each of these patterns. So if you don't like the algorithm that I show you, that's okay. Uh, it's not like you're stuck with it. You can go out and find your own algorithm, uh, maybe something that works a little better for you. These are my favorite that I, I use. These are the ones that work best for me. Uh, but Maybe they're not the ones that you like the best. So it's okay to uh, go out and find your own. And there was a third thing I want to say, but it's totally left my mind, my old man mind. So hopefully it isn't important. And if it is, I'll come back and uh, go over it at the end of the video. Otherwise, it hopefully wasn't important. Hooray. So let's start with the patterns. And I want to start with fish or soon. Okay, a lot of these patterns you are going to recognize from beginner's method, especially soon, S-U-N-E, or fish. Okay, because in beginner's method, you actually look for this pattern as you are solving. So let's start with that one, since you probably are already familiar with it. Here's the deal, though. You may not have realized it. You probably didn't. But there are actually two fishies, two soons. Or soon, which is this. And there's anti soon, which looks like this, except that there's a different piece on the outer edge. So let's look at the outer edge. The way that I know uh, and can dis can distinguish between soon and anti soon is by looking up here. Okay, soon has the yellow piece on the left side and the nose over here on the left side, 
Antisoon is going to have the yellow piece on the right side and the nostrils of the fish uh, over here on the right side. So see, if I turn the fish's nose over here to the right side, I still have the yellow piece on the left side. So that's how I can tell the difference. This yellow piece is always going to be on the left side with soon. So I turn the, his snout back to the uh, left side to match up that piece on top. And then I'm going to do the algorithm that you're probably familiar with already from beginner's method, which is R U R prime U R U two R prime. And that gives me a completely solved yellow top. Hooray. And leaves me only with PLL left to do. So next is the opposite. It's opofishy, opposite fish, uh, but really it's not. It's anti soon. And it is the exact same thing, but on the other side. So now I have, just as I explained a second ago, I've got uh, the fish and his snout is down here on the right side. And the yellow now is on the right side as well. And even if I try and turn his snout to the left side, the yellow stays on the right side. So that's my hint. That yellow piece is my hint where his snout is going to be. And whether I'm doing the algorithm for the uh, soon or the algorithm for anti-soon. Okay. Anti-soon is the exact same algorithm, except it's on the left side. So it's L prime, U prime. L, U prime, L prime, U two, L prime. And that gives me a completed yellow top. When you did beginner's method, I'm sure you noticed that when you do the fish, sometimes you only have to do it once. And sometimes with beginner's method, you end up doing the fish algorithm twice. And the reason is when you were getting soon, then you only had to do the algorithm once you were doing the soon algorithm but if you got anti-soon then you would have to do the algorithm twice because if you do the soon algorithm with anti-soon you're going to get it it's going to change it okay if you get soon and you do the anti-soon algorithm then you're going to get uh anti-soon and vice versa so that's why it's nice to know each of the algorithms because then you only have to do it once instead of twice and you get the completed yellow top The third case that you will often run into when you are doing for look last layer is what I call H cross. And there are other names for this that I've seen out there, but I prefer to call it H cross because that just makes sense to my brain. Okay, H cross looks like this. It's got a yellow cross on the top. And then there are the four remaining, the four corner yellow corner pieces are uh, on the sides across from each other. So I've got yellow and yellow and directly across, yellow and yellow on the other side. And obviously when you're holding this, it might be some other orientation at first. So you're gonna have to look at that and be like, oh, okay, that's H cross. And then orient it so that the yellows are on the left side and the right side, because that's how you're gonna solve this. The algorithm for H cross is R, U, R prime, U, R, U prime, R prime, U, R, U two, R prime. And it looks like this. So it's R, U, R prime, U, R, U prime, R prime, U, R, U two, R prime. And that gives you a completed yellow top. The fourth pattern that you're going to often run into is uh, this one, which is very similar to H cross in that it starts with a cross on the top. However, notice that the pieces are not, the yellow corners are not across from each other. Instead, I still have on the left side, the two yellow pieces together on the same side, just like with H cross. 
but I don't have any on the right side. Instead, the two yellow corners are flipped so that uh, one is facing towards me and one is facing towards the back, okay? And just like with uh, H-cross, it might be oriented different when you first start, and so you're going to recognize, okay, this is, uh, and by the way, the name of this pattern is Will, okay? And you're going to then orient it so that the yellows are that are on the same side are on the left, the ones that are facing forward and back end up on the right, and the reason that this is called will is because it kind of, sort of, we're stretching our imagination a little bit, but it looks like a will. This would be the outside of the will, and these are the spokes. So uh, H-cross doesn't have a bottom and top, whereas will, or a yellow piece on the front and back, whereas will does. The algorithm for solving will, and again, I'm going to hold it so that the two yellows that are on the same side are on the left, the two yellows that are on the other side, on the right side, are front and back, forward and back. The algorithm is R, U2, R2, U prime, R2, U prime, R2, U2, R. And it looks like this. It's R, U2, R2, U prime, R2, U prime, R2, U2, R. Okay, the fifth pattern is called headlights. And so you can kind of imagine this as a car. And these are its flashing headlights in the front. And just like uh, I was holding it, okay, you're going to hold the back of the car facing you and the headlight shining outward onto the universe. And the algorithm for solving headlights is R2, D prime, R, U2, R prime, D, R, U2, R. And it looks thusly. So it's R2, and I'm going to do this one with my bottom finger, but you'll see the bottom of the cube move. It's D prime, R, U2, R prime, and then same on this side. I'm going to do the bottom of my finger, but you'll see the bottom of the cube move. D, if my finger will get out of the way, D, R, U2, R. Case number six looks just like case number five. That looks just like headlights, right? So far on the top. Once again, I have the car, but this time I don't have any headlights up there. Instead, <clears throat> I have blinkers, and the car is turning. Okay, so blinkers, now when I'm solving blinkers, I'm going to turn the car. This is head how I solve headlights, but blinkers, because you can imagine the car turning. It's got its blinkers on, and it's turning. So I'm going to turn it to the left. I'm going to put the blinkers on the left side of, of uh, the cube. And then I'm going to use the algorithm L, F, R prime, F prime, L prime, F, R, F prime, which looks thusly L, F, R prime, F prime, L prime, F, R, F prime. Case number seven, the seventh pattern that you're going to see is this adorbsible bow tie. Okay, this is bow tie because, you know, it looks like a bow tie. Well, when I saw bow tie, I want to find a yellow, and there are a couple of them. Uh, well, there's two, okay, uh, yellow pieces on the edge, and I need to get one in the upper right corner, and there's only one way I can do that, because if I put this one in the upper right corner, it's not going to be on the top, it's going to be on the side, but I need it on the top, so I'm going to turn it until this one is in the upper right corner on the top, and then I'm going to use the algorithm R prime, F prime, L prime, F, R, 
f prime l f. And notice it's just rf l f rf l f, but the primes are uh, in different places each time I go through it. Okay, so it's r prime f prime l prime f, and then it's r f prime l f and that gives me a completed yellow top so those are the seven patterns that you're going to see if you make a yellow cross and uh, which then makes it easier because you only have to memorize seven patterns if you don't make a yellow cross and this is actually the third thing i was going to say it just occurs to me so hooray you are not left without that knowledge uh, if you don't make the yellow cross, then you will still sometimes run into these seven patterns. So it's not wasted to learn them is what I wanted to say. Okay, when you go on to full CFOP, you're going to learn uh, these seven patterns and 50 others as well. Because the yellow cross shrinks it down to these seven and you can only get these seven cases after you do the yellow cross. But if you don't do the yellow cross, you'll still sometimes get one of these seven patterns as well as 50 other cases. And you go bypassing the yellow cross. You're taking one more algorithm out. Uh, you go just straight into OLL and uh, get a completed yellow top based on whichever of the 57 cases you get. Well, hello. Thank you for watching my one take rambling science video where I talk a lot and uh, try to do as few and usually no edits whatsoever. So you hear all my ums and my awkward pauses as I try to collect my thoughts into my head. If you like learning about science, do me a favor. Uh, I have classes that I teach over on outschool.com and you can find out about these classes by going to my website which is handsome science teacher because I mean look at this face handsome science teacher.com where you can sign up and get access to not only these videos because well, you already have access to those right they're free but also access to packets that go along with them and live conferences with me where, we, where I teach you and grade your work and we learn together. I have an entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade science. Uh, also, you are welcome to, if you would like to subscribe to my channel, that helps me too, just because it gets my, the word out about me.